A lot of us folks, right, me, born in 1960, C-section, no breastfeeding, no donated breast milk, didn't, didn't exist then. Uh, a couple of years later, really bad pneumonia, tonsils out, weight problem my whole life. Um, I adopt a whole food plant-based diet as an adult because of inflammation and pain. Wind up with autoimmune, thyroid, uh, Hashimoto's, lupus. Uh, find goodbye lupus, Dr. Brooke Goldner. Uh, smoothies, wonderful. Everything stabilizes. Uh, Hashimoto's reversed. Uh, ANA, double strand DNA, not getting worse. Everything stable. Advice test comes back negative. Epstein Barr still always high. Uh, and then we're here. A lot of us in the a lot of us in the in, in the audience are smoothie shredders, right? We we've got this autoimmune thing. We found Dr. Goldner and Robert Lustig goes after our smoothies again. Tells us that the Vitamix breaks up the cell walls and wipes out the insoluble fiber and raises the blood sugar. We know from our own experience that it doesn't raise the blood sugar and it reverses diabetes and heart disease stabilizes and kidney function comes back and liver comfort function comes back. But is there, and we've been here before, right? Dr. Uh, Dr. Khan published an article uh, debunking the last um, thing that the, the, the plant-based docs went after the Vitamix. Uh, Dr. Clapper said, you weren't born clutching a Vitamix. Uh, Dr. Russellstein says you can't get the enzyme from your tongue. And then Dr. Khan publishes says, well, you know, you can't fool the body. Uh, the enzyme finds the nitrites and converts them and all is well. Uh, like to put, sounds like you could put that fiber myth to bed uh, with yeah. your, your own experience. I don't know if there's, if there's, um, I can, if there's I can help studies. with this. Yeah. And Stephen, first of all, you had your hand up so early. So thank you for your patience and for, you know, being the first one there. I love it. Um, I met Brooke Goldner at a conference years ago. It was um, the Plantrician Conference. And I think she's the real deal. And I'm so glad you found her and she's been helpful. And I mean, you have overcome such a lot, you know, the tonsillectomy, weight issues, two autoimmune diseases. The proof is in the pudding. You start, I, let me tell you, if I could only have my patients do one thing, it would be do a green smoothie every day. And I, you know, like you as somebody who has serious autoimmune disease, I see patients with bloating and irritable bowel syndrome, but my bread and butter in my GI practice are patients with Crohn's and ulcerative colitis who are sick. They have real disease. And the thing more than anything, more than the probiotics, more than the medication, the thing that I see turning my patients around are the green smoothies. And I, my Vitamix, I, my, I used it so much. My thing broke. They sent me, it didn't break, but it was, you know, old. They sent me a new one. I have one of the old basic ones. I think the Vitamix is as close as I get to magic in the kitchen. Cause I know even for me, and I'm fortunate to be pretty healthy, that I drink that green smoothie in the morning and I feel completely different. I literally can feel my cells and microbes vibrating. So here's the deal. Like you've been doing this. Dr. Goldner recommended it. You've been doing it and it improved things. It reversed things. So, you know, regardless of what people are telling you, you know, that blending up vegetables and drinking them is not doing you any harm. And, you know, I do recommend that people think about a variety of ways to get vegetables. It's good to get some raw. I know Dr. Esselstein, who's, you know, a fantastic person and advocate for health. I participated in one of the conferences recently. I know he talked about liking to steam them and, you know, different theories there, but it's all good. Just eat more vegetables, blend them, steam them, saute them, boil them, frappe them just get them in. And ideally the fresher, the better, you know, if I, if you don't have access to a farmer's market, that's okay. If the only place you can get vegetables is a Walmart, that's better than no vegetables. Of course, ideally farmer's market, all of that. But I just want to say, Stephen, that, you know, most of the useful stuff that I know as a physician that I'm able to share and pass on to other people, I learn from people like you. I learn from patients who were generous enough to share what they were going through and who trusted me to say, well, let's try this and let's try that. 
And so, you know, this community of people who have suffered similarly and who come together to participate in things like this and to share their experience is, is just invaluable. So I'm so sorry that you went through all of that, but I'm so grateful that you're here and you're sharing and you're doing better. So thank you. Thank you so much for that, doctor. And uh, we're going to move quickly now to Thomas. Welcome, Thomas. Oh, thank you very much. I always love a doctor who's a true scientist. And I'm going to get one of your books. My question is not so much of a clinical nature, but of a human physiology. Now, we know that cows are able to digest grass because the grass has beta galactosidic bonds where the sugar is in the grass, but they can break it down in their cacum. Now, my question to you as a human being, we have appendix. And in our, in our appendix, is there not bacteria that is possible to break down beta galactosidic bonds? And I suspect maybe the smoothie is breaking down those beta galactosidic bonds to allow more of the fiber to be digested. Of course, the raw, you have the full fiber. We can't break down those beta galactosidic bonds for the sugar. Explain that. Is there a purpose? The question, I'll, I'll be very brief. I, I want to be brief. Is there a purpose to the, uh, the human appendix for that reason? That's it. Yeah, Thomas, that is such a fantastic question. And really, you know, I, I can't tell you, like literally not a week goes by where I have a conversation with somebody who, and I assume you're not a doctor, but you may be, but where I have a conversation with somebody who's not a doctor, and I'm like, how is it that you understand these principles better than my medical colleagues? I had this conversation just last night with a friend who called me in dire straits, who had been in the emergency room with some abdominal pain, and they wanted to take out her gallbladder. And she sent me a copy of a CAT scan that was totally normal and labs that were normal. And I was like, do not let them take your gallbladder out. And she said to me, well, because the gallbladder does important things, right? And I said, yes, absolutely. And she said, well, the doctors in the ER told me the gallbladder wasn't important. So Thomas, you hit the nail on the head with the appendix. You know, my surgical colleagues and some of my GI colleagues refer to the appendix as a vestigial organ, meaning, yeah, it once served a purpose, you know, maybe when we were ruminants like cows, but now it doesn't serve a purpose anymore. But we have very clear data that the appendix is a repository for gut bacteria to hang out and to get mobilized when you need them, like in the case of a foodborne infection and perhaps for breaking down galactosidase bonds, et cetera. So we know that the appendix is not vestigial, just like you need your gallbladder. It's a critical digestive organ and so is the appendix. And we know that removing these organs can lead to consequences. So for example, we know that appendectomy, the surgical removal of the appendix is a risk factor for inflammatory bowel disease. And we, nowadays we're a little bit better, right? Instead of just whipping out somebody's appendix, now we'll often treat through appendicitis. Unfortunately, we're treating through with a lot of antibiotics, but you know that's still better than removing it. So I'm so glad you asked that question. These are important organs and we need to try and hold on to them. Thanks very much for that, doctor. And now we're going to move on to Lynn M. I am asking you to unmute Lynn M. if you're there. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Hi, doctor. I just have to say your talk was the best talk that I've heard through this whole summit. I have a serious concern. I'm kind of emotional right now. My 11-year-old granddaughter was just diagnosed with Crohn's disease. And I'm trying to find ways to get her back to health. She's kind of a picky eater, but I'm pretty much plant-based and I eat lots of vegetables and I'm trying to encourage her to do that. And I think after listening to your talk, I need to get her a Vitamix or some kind of high powered blender and get her on green smoothies. Do you have any advice for me? I do, Lynn, I do. First of all, thank you so much for your kind words. And I, what I wanna tell you is there is a silver lining to this. I would not wish Crohn's on my worst enemy. However, what I will tell you is that having a chronic autoimmune disease like this at a young age with a grandmother like you to help guide her 
she is going to basically connect the dots between how she lives, what she eats, and how she feels. She's going to connect the dots at a young age that some people don't connect till their 60s when they're lying there after their first heart attack about to kick the bucket. She's going to put it together early. My Crohn's patients are incredible. And again, not a disease I would wish on anybody, but particularly the ones who are diagnosed young, they get it. They are smart. And you know what? They look at food as food as medicine. It, they definitely are not live to eat. They are eat to live. Now, this can take a little while to happen, right? She's 11. She's you know going to be going to birthday parties and stuff where everybody's having cake and cookies and ice cream. And she's going to want to eat that stuff. And she probably is going to eat that stuff. And I would recommend that you, you know, when you think about the approach with her, that it's not like, oh, you can never have this stuff, but you want to let her know balance, right? You know, if you eat a lot of this stuff, it's going to change what's going on in your gut and it's going to make your disease worse. So think about having, you know, a bite of cake and make sure that you're having all the healthy stuff. The Vitamix is such a great idea for her. Get her a little smoothie recipe book, have fun in the kitchen with her where she can play around and let her put whatever fruit in it. She wants it to taste good. When I started doing these with my daughter after her long illnesses, multiple, multiple viral and bacterial illnesses from all these antibiotics, we started out with smoothies that were primarily strawberries and bananas with a little bit of coconut yogurt. And I would put some spinach in it. And the, you know, the spinach doesn't really taste, change a taste much, but it changes the color. So when it was just the strawberries and bananas and the coconut yogurt, it was pink and, you know, like a pretty color in her mind. And then when we put the spinach in, it turned to sort of a muddy brownish color that didn't look quite so nice. So I would put it in a, in a, in a bottle that was opaque, that wasn't see-through. So she didn't pay attention to the color and she would just pay attention to the taste. So it would be so great to have some smoothie parties with your dot with your granddaughter where you know you play around and like let's try a little spinach let's try a little kale and put in the you know the plant-based yogurt and the fruit so that it's more palatable and then over time start to decrease the amount of sweet so that she gets more used to the amount of more bitter and the same thing with the vegetables you know like literally if she's eating four green beans with dinner it's a start she doesn't have to you know become completely at 11, adopt a whole food plant-based diet. It would be great if she did, but just start with, make sure she knows that it's less about what she's eating. That's bad. And more about the good stuff that she's missing. So focus on, we got to feed our good microbes and, you know, play around with the food. And I tell you, Lynn, when she gets it, and if she's your granddaughter, she's going to get it fast. She is going to be so far ahead of the curve. She's going to be healthier than her peer group. Because she's, despite the chronic autoimmune disease, and hopefully Crohn's is going to be in her rear view mirror pretty soon. And even if she does need a more potent drug to get it into remission, even that, right? It doesn't mean she has to stay on that forever. So she is going to make that connection and she's going to be healthier than her peer group because she is going to understand food as medicine and what that means and connect those dots. So I'm, I'm cheering for her. And I know with you guiding her, she's going to be just fine.